So I contacted the Instant Pot Company to find out the exact proper way to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot so that it would come out tasty. And I learned a lot of information from them and I'm going to share it with you today. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, sourdough, ferments, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. So I've been wanting to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot. And so tonight for dinner, I thought that's what I'd do. But I read a lot about the Instant Pot and the whole chickens and whatnot, and a lot of people saying, oh, it's not too flavorful, kind of bland, this, that, and the other thing. And I decided, well, let me call Instant Pot and find out exactly what are the right times, how to do this, what seasonings I should use, and so on and so forth. So I had a very nice conversation with a young man who was on the phone with me and he explained to me that in his particular case he took a class, an actual cooking class, through Instant Pot uh, to learn how to cook various things and learn how to use the Instant Pot so he could answer questions when people like me called. So he's tried doing the whole chicken a number of different ways and the people in his class tried doing them a no number of different ways. And what he found was that if you put the chicken on the rack, so we're going to use the rack, and you cook it for eight minutes a pound, and you do a nice dry rub seasoning. It comes the most flavorful. Now the chicken I have here is four and a quarter pounds. So at eight minutes a pound, that's four times eight for the four pounds, or 32 minutes, and then another two minutes for the additional quarter pound. So we're going to cook this for a total of 34 minutes. And I also learned that when you cook a whole chicken, you should cook it on high, on the high setting, not the low. And now I have an eight quart uh, Instant Pot, but whether you have an eight quart or a six quart, the same rules apply. Now he shared with me that a lot of people will put some lemons or onions or whatever the case may be into the cavity and that does not change the amount of time that you cook in the Instant Pot. And I found that very interesting because if you stuff a chicken and you a whole chicken and you bake it, it does vary the time. You usually have to cook it a little more. But in the case of the Instant Pot, that's not true. So you can put anything you want in the cavity and it's still going to be eight minutes a pound. Now as to seasonings, he said he's tried a lot of different things and the people in his class tried a lot of different things. They went with Italian seasonings, they went with Indian seasonings, they went with different seasonings, just a mixture of their own making. And he found that the best flavored chicken were those that used a chili barbecue dry rub. And not only does a nice chili barbecue rub give great flavor to the chicken, it also gives good color, which is something that can make the chicken look very appetizing. Because cooking this whole chicken in the Instant Pot is more or less what he equated it to was like poaching it. So the chicken, if it doesn't have a nice rub on it, the skin can be a little less than appetizing. So giving the chicken a good rub gives the skin some color, gives it some flavor, so it's very appetizing when you bring it to the table and it also tastes delicious. So you can use any kind of chili barbecue or chili rub or barbecue rub or chili barbecue rub that you like. If there's one you purchased that's already mixed at the grocery store, that would probably work great. But I like to just kind of mix up my own variety. And so what I've got here is two teaspoons of a fine ground sea salt and I've got one teaspoon of ancho chili powder. That's my, lately that's my favorite chili powder, the ancho chili, um, but you can use anything you want, just a, a plain chili powder, uh, whatever you like. And then this is a green ancho chili powder, so I've got a teaspoon of each. And then here I've got uh, paprika, and this is just the plain paprika. It's not the smoked paprika. I'm not too fond of the smoked paprika, 
paprika, and I'm really using this paprika uh, to help with give the chicken some color, because paprika's flavor is actually very mild, so we're kind of using that more for color. Then I've got a teaspoon of onion powder, and then I've got a teaspoon of coriander, ground coriander. I love coriander, and so I've got a teaspoon of that. Uh, you could also add in cumin if you like that. And then I've also got here is a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. So I'm just gonna use my hands to mix this all together, and then I'm gonna start rubbing it into the chicken. Well, I've got this all mixed together, so what I'm gonna do is first rub some right into the cavity of the chicken and give it a really good rub, rub it all around so it really gets into the, penetrates the meat. And now I'm gonna use the rest of this to give this outside of the chicken a really good rub and get this all covered completely in these spices. Well, I've got this seasoning rubbed into this chicken beautifully. Now I'm just gonna pick this up off my paper towel. I'm gonna fold this and discard it. And then I'm gonna bring the rack over and I'm just gonna open up this rack and we're gonna put the chicken right on top of it. And I think I'm just gonna tuck these wings under, very similar how if I were baking a chicken. And I just move this chicken around the other way. I think it fits better on the rack long ways like this with the handles on each side. And I'll overlay a picture so you can see exactly how I have it in this rack. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is I just saved a little seasoning just to put on top. Cause I figured as I was rubbing everything in, you know, some can fall off a little and whatnot. And I wanna make sure that I have plenty on top to make it look exceptionally appetizing. And now the final thing that I'm gonna do is just take some onions and put them right into the cavity to give a little extra flavor. And I'm leaving the skins on because the skins have flavor and they have vitamins in them, which is fantastic. So don't, you don't need to worry about removing the skins or uh, discarding them. But if you decide that you do want to peel the skins, save them for when you make bone broth. Because if you've been with me a while, you know I make a lot of bone broth. And I also called the manufacturer when I made bone broth in the Instant Pot so that I would get that right. And uh, you know, just save all your scraps, throw them in. It's perfect. They're loaded with nutrients and flavor, and then they don't go to waste. Well, I got the cavity all stuffed with that cut up onion. And now I'm just gonna take a little string and I'm gonna tie the legs together so that it'll make for a nice presentation when it's all cooked. And all I'm gonna do, no need to truss or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is just get this string under the legs and just pull them together and make a bow. Okay, perfect. And yes, I did wash my hands before I touched the string. Well, this looks glorious and it's all ready to go into the Instant Pot. So let's lower her right in. <laughs> Now an important thing that I want to mention is that before I lowered this chicken into the Instant Pot, I put some water in the bottom of it. Now, if you have a six quart uh, Instant Pot, the minimum amount of water that you're going to need is a cup and a half. If you have an eight quart, like I do, the minimum amount of water that you're going to need in an Instant Pot, regardless of what you're cooking, is two cups. So I put two cups of water into the bottom of the Instant Pot before I lowered the chicken in. And the reason that you need to put the water in is it would burn otherwise, or the bottom of the Instant Pot would burn otherwise, which a lot of people have said online that they've run into that problem. They either forgot to put the water in or didn't put enough water in because in essence, when it's cooking under pressure, it's steaming and it needs that water. So you wanna make sure a cup and a half is the minimum amount if you're using a six quart or two cups of minimum amount of water if you're using an eight quart. And I just put the minimum amount since we, kind of, we wanna cook this chicken, we don't wanna make soup, uh, but the minimum is two cups. So I've got that in there on the bottom. Alrighty, well I've got that chicken in the Instant Pot. Now I'm gonna put the lid on and we'll get ready to seal it and set the time. <laughs> it makes a little sad, and then we lock it. Now, 
on top is a vent and I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see it up close if you're new to working with the Instant Pot and I want to share this with you because this was something that uh, I again had to call Instant Pot and ask them about because I just wasn't sure this is back when I was making bone broth one says venting and one says sealing and obviously when we're pressure cooking we want it to be sealed but if you have this and you've worked with it, there's no real, I was expecting there'd be a real click and be firm and lock in place. It really doesn't. It venting, it's a little higher, sealing, it's a little lower. So when you go to work with that, know that, yep, that's correct. That's just how it is. It really just goes from higher to lower. It's not, nothing firm, no special click, nothing like that. So I've got this on sealing and now we'll get ready to set the time. So I've got this sealed, I've got the lid locked in, and I've got the pressure valve to sealing. And now, depending on what type of Instant Pot you have, you may have yours may say manual cook, uh, mine says pressure cook, so it varies. But we're, we're going to want to choose a manual setting. So on this 8 quart, I'm going to hit pressure cook. And that's showing it's set for 35 minutes, and the pressure level is already set to high, so I'm set with that, and I just want to bring it down one minute. So I set that for 34 minutes, and it clicked on, and now we'll just wait. And while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the dinner ready. I'm going to serve this with some broccoli and some farro as our grain. Well, this chicken cooked for 34 minutes, and now I'm ready to open this up, and we'll take a look and see how it came. Oh, it looks glorious. Let me get, let me see if that's hot. I'm gonna get some pot holders. Look at this chicken. This looks wonderful. And there's some beautiful broth in here from that two cups of water that we added. It's very rich in color. I'm hoping that it's gonna be really flavorful. I'll take a picture and I'll overlay it uh, so that you can see the color of this broth. It looks quite lovely. I will give that a taste too. Well, let me take this chicken off this rack and we'll carve it and give it a taste and see how it turned out. I'm just going to cut this string off and I have to tell you when I was taking it, when I was taking the chicken off the rack, the wings started to fall off. It's so tender, literally falling off the bone tender. Well, this is really going to look lovely to bring to the table. And I would even put, you know, some vegetables around here. I might cook them separately. I don't know if I'd do them in the Instant Pot or not, because I don't know in terms of time-wise, I wouldn't want them to get overcooked. But this reminds me very much of a recipe I have where I poach a chicken. It's a combination of a poach and a braise. I'll link to that in the iCards that I do on the stovetop. And with that, I put the vegetables in too. But you put some carrots and some celery, and I've got the onions from the cavity and put that around this chicken. This will make a beautiful presentation. Well, let's give it a cut. Let's slice it and give it a taste. So tonight we're going to have this with broccoli and with farro, but I think next time I'm going to do that with the carrots and the celery and the onions and put them all around the chicken. I think it'll look lovely. Well, anyway, <laughs> let's give this a taste. Let me give this a nice slice. Now, something I want to point out that I noticed when I was slicing it, because of the dry rub, the skin, it's actually got like a little bit of a, I don't know if you can hear it, it's got a little bit of a almost like a little bit of a crust to it. So it's not soggy. It's actually very appetizing. So I just washed my hands. I have clean hands and I just want to feel this chicken. This actually, this, this is why the gentleman must have recommended doing a dry rub. This actually has a nice crisp feel to it. It's not soggy in the least. Now for the taste test. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. The spice rub is perfect. The chicken is so tender, literally melts in your mouth. And the skin is, I took a piece with the skin on it. It's very appetizing. It's not crisp, like if you had roasted it or broiled it in the oven. Excuse me. But it's very tasty. I wish there was a way you could feel the skin, but I'm going to try to do it with the uh, knife near the mic, and I hope you can hear this. Can you hear that? It 
it's not soggy. So I want to give this broth a try to see how the flavor came. Mmm, that's really good. It's very chickeny flavor, a chickeny flavor, and with a little bit of the salt and the spices that we used, this is delightful. You could just drink this as a broth or use it as a base in a soup, uh, or even for tonight's chicken, make turn this into a gravy. Well, I hope you'll give this a try and definitely do the dry rub. I think you're going to be really impressed. If you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make bone broth, chicken bone broth, in the Instant Pot. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.